I'm Rob Godshaw, and I'm an artist in residence at Recology in San Francisco, and this is my studio. My primary interest throughout this residency has been in e-waste, that's electronic waste. Electronics, computers, televisions, uh, things that are too hazardous to go down the regular stream. This is where all the electronic waste goes. Um, essentially anything with a printed circuit board. You know, a lot of these components are either toxic or valuable. So they're brought to a facility in San Leandro where they're taken apart and separated out. What I found very surprising is that most of what I've taken from the e-waste waste stream uh, has been fully functional. Uh, so this is a combination of three things I found at the dump. Uh, this this like classic galvanized steel trash can, a bunch of three color uh, LED strip, and this, these pedals that were from a medical device. There's a special area that accumulates fluorescent bulbs, um, which I like understandably assumed were all burnt out and dead. Um, but when I started plugging them in, I found out that almost none of them <laughs> were, were burned out. Uh, so this is a collection of six uh, of the circuline type fluorescent bulbs, uh, which I just have in this awkward chandelier. But they have really nice qualities to them, and I think I'm going to use them for like a little selfie booth because the the circuline light uh, really uh, flatters faces in interesting ways. I'm not going to lie; I barely understand this object at all. But what I found was that uh, when I plugged it in, it projected a very faint rainbow, and then when I took it apart and removed a few components, the rainbow got a lot brighter. So now it's become this really super vibrant, just rainbow generator. I found this, this walk, don't walk um, LED panel um, that the city didn't want anymore. And this pressure mat that was once part of a home alarm system. Uh, and some relays and some power supplies. And what I combined them into was uh, the system where as soon as you step on the mat, it, it tells you to stop. <laughs> One of the requirements for applying to this residency is that you first uh, take a tour of the facility. Um, and when I, when I did that, one thing I was really struck by was this immense, almost field of rear projection televisions. I want a giant screen TV. RCA is making television better and better. This is the corner in which all of the big screen televisions accumulate. Ah. So there's this really this mirror here that reflects the image projected by this lens against the screen that's normally in place here. This one's been damaged, so it's missing the screen. They haven't been making them for like four or five years, and they haven't been popular for almost a, you know more than a decade. So every time somebody you know buys a new television, the old television has to go somewhere, and, and it often ends up here. I had this notion in my head that if I removed all the electronics from the television. So if I took out everything that produces light and just kept everything that directs and displays the light in the television, that any object placed with the light projector would be magnified on the screen. So the project actually proposed was to turn all these televisions into microscopes. I think I'm gonna take this one. It's a good age. Um, the ones with the flat tops are nice because then I can put another television on top of it. And it's a brand I haven't worked with before. Um, so this is one of the television microscopes and it's a TV, uh, a big screen TV that I removed all the electronics from and replaced with these, this set of lapel pins that are mounted to this bike derailleur that allow me to focus them um, in different ways. So the television essentially just becomes a giant microscope. With this microscope project, the biggest decision I had to make uh, wasn't technical, it was conceptual. It's like, what content am I going to magnify? Luckily, it's with so many things in this residency, the decision kind of gets made for you as you're scavenging. Um, 
because you're you're constantly presented with things you could never imagine that you would find. And uh, as soon as I found my first uh, lapel pin, it just seemed perfect. They're often you know shiny and metallic, which means that they reflect light really well, which results in a brighter a brighter image on the screen. Most importantly is that they often signify like a very serious affiliation between a person and an organization. Much of my work in the past has, has used technical means to like move things that can't be moved or to make visible things that aren't normally visible. And in, in this work it's about making the, the almost invisible significance of discarded little bits of ephemera uh, big enough to be considered so that the you know implied personal narrative has a chance to to speak My first memory of a digital camera was the, uh, the Sony floppy disk based <laughs> cameras. I think that this one's uh, less than one megapixel. So this is lens is from the oldest television I took apart. Yeah. So if you so if you take something that's kind of frosted and bring it toward the rear of the lens, you can see the image. That in this case is outdoor. 